Tony Costello program, starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello, brought to you by Camel, the cigarette of costlier, properly aged tobaccos. The Abbott and Costello program, with the music of Carl Hoff and his orchestra, our singing star, Amy Arnell, and spotlighting that chunky, chubby little cherub, who went caught putting corn in his Uncle Artie Stebbins' pocket because he heard him say he was going to meet a young chicken, calmly said, I'm a bad boy! Costello, Costello, what's going on there? What's the idea of bringing that dog in here? Where'd you get him? Huh? I say, where'd you get that dog? Why bring him in here? Oh, I found him, Abbott. Costello, do you realize we're running a first-class pet shop now? Get that dog out of here. Oh, no, Abbott, I'm going to keep this dog. He's a genuine airplane dog. Uh, an airplane dog? Yeah, just look at his tail spin. I, oh, stop. <laughs> Costello, where'd you get that broken-down flea hound? Abbott, how do you call this little dog a flea hound? He just took first prize at the cat show. Now, wait a minute. How could he take first prize at the cat show? He took the cat. He took... <laughs> Costello, you take that dog right out of here now. Remember that. We don't want any mongrels in here with our other animals. Abbott, don't make me chase this little dog away. He's taking the place of my other dog that died. His name was Corset. Corset? Mm -hmm. Corset? How did you happen to name the dog Corset? Because we tied him up in the daytime and we let him out at night. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that dog you had, Costello. He was a duck hunt. Yeah. Uh, wasn't he? Yeah, one of those long dogs. Yeah. Uh, how did he happen to die? It's a sad tale, Abbott. What do you mean? He met his end going around a tree. Uh, going around... <laughs> well, I'd be ashamed... <laughs> I'd be ashamed to go anywhere with that mutt. Oh, no, Abbott. Oh, uh, yes. This dog has class. He goes everywhere. He was at the UNO conference. He likes to hang around the big tree. I... Uh oh <laughs> Please talk sense. What's wrong with you? <laughs> now stop this foolishness, will you please? Now, no more nonsense, Costello. Take it easy. Hey, honest, Abbott. He's what? a very smart dog. I'll prove it to you. Susie, how much is one and one? <laughs> That's right, ain't it, Abbott? Uh, don't you know? Now, Susie, how much is two and two? <laughs> come on, come on, Susie. Two and two is five. Come on, Georgie. That's better. Now, Susie, for the final test, tell Abbott what time it is. Quarter to seven. Right. <laughs> Wait a minute, Costello. Come here. What kind of a dog is that? Do you remember that famous dog, Strongheart? Yes. This is his brother, Weak Stomach. Right. <laughs> now, furthermore, Abbott, this is the kindest dog in the whole world. Notice how he's got his tail curled up? What's he doing that for? He lets the fleas loop the loop. <laughs> Look, Costello, don't bring any more broken down animals, please. Are you listening to me? I don't want you to bring any more broken down animals into this pet shop. Now get busy around here. Now. Oh, answer that phone. Have it, Costello's pet shop. Mr. Costello, do you have a greyhound? Yes, I do. Why don't you get on it and get out of town? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was a peachy joke. I'll pull it on of it. Hey, yeah, but do you have a greyhound? No, but I have a setter. You'll never get out of town that way. <laughs> oh, look, 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 Lou, will you please stop this nonsense and get busy and, and <laughs> clean up this pet shop before a customer comes in? Uh, by the way, what did you do with those uh, newborn puppies? Oh, I put them in a dog incubator. You don't? We have no dog incubator. What's that can in the backyard that says deposit litter here? Yeah. <laughs> That's a no one. <laughs> you dummy, those little puppies will catch cold in the backyard. One of the puppies has a cold already. Oh, then I want you to take that cold powder and, and put it in that long rubber tube. Place one end of the tube in your mouth and one end of the dog's mouth. Uh, you understand that? Yeah. And blow. That's no good. I already tried it. Eh? What happened? The dog blew first. <laughs> oh, uh, wait a minute. Hello, Abbott and Costello's pet shop. Who? Mrs. Pike? Yes, yes, I'll send Costello over here. What kind of a dog have you? Oh, a Pekingese. Okay, Mrs. Pike. Costello, I want you to go over and get a peek at Mrs. Pike. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Get a peek at Mrs. Pike? Uh, yes. Why can't I take a good look? I... <laughs> Listen, you dummy. I want you to go after Pike's Peak. What do you think I am, a mountain goat? <laughs> you idiot, I want you to go to Mrs. Pike's house for a peek and ease. Abbott, how dare you suggest such a thing? I might glance at her ankles, but I would never peek at her knees. <laughs> Where do you go? I gotta finish. I gotta finish washing this dog. What dog? You know, that little white dog that, um, that there, the one that, uh, um... Spitz? No, but he drools a little. I know. <laughs> never mind that, Costello. Now, I have to come back for Mrs. Pikes. I want you to take care of Mrs. Uh, Murphy's chow. Her what? Her chow. How was Mrs. Murphy's chow? I don't know. I never ate at her house. <laughs> No, Costello, you're thinking of the chow you chew. A what? <laughs> you chew, you chew, you chew, you chew. Go sit tight, go Hey, you catch a call, Abbott. Oh, I better get ne- that tube and put it in your mouth. Oh, why did I ever go into business with you? <laughs> you haven't done a thing in this pet shop since the day we opened it. Oh, no? This morning I put a cage in the front window, and it's attracting more customers than anything you've done around the place. You put a cage in mm-hmm. the front window? What's in it? What's in it? Come here, I'll show you. <laughs> go to all of that. Listen. I love you. Ouch! I love you. Ouch! I love you. Ouch! I love you. Ouch! What in the... What in the world is that? Two porcupines. Necking. (laughs) The United States is a big country, and it was a big job to survey the cigarette preferences of doctors from border to border and coast to coast. But recently, three leading independent research organizations tackled the job and did it. To 113,000 doctors, they put the query, which cigarette do you smoke? Figures were checked and rechecked, and the brand most named was Camels. Now, this hardly comes as a rousing surprise to a Camel smoker. He figures that doctors would enjoy the rich, full flavor and cool mildness of Camels' costlier tobaccos just as much as he does. But if you yourself aren't smoking Camels now, try them on your own T-Zone. That's tea for taste and tea for throat, the true proving ground of a cigarette. Find out how Camel's superb blend of costlier tobaccos registers with your T-Zone. According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke Camel's than any other cigarette. And here's Carl Hoff and the Camel Orchestra with Come to Baby Do. Quiet, Rover. Quiet, Fido. Costello. Costello, come here. Get busy now and take inventory of our animals here in the pet shop. Okay, I'll count them. Four dogs. Three cats. <coughs> Rabbits. <laughs> Costello, you didn't count that little rabbit in the corner. He wasn't there when I started counting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> an old bloodhound. <laughs> Hello! Abbott Costello Pet Shop. Do you have a giraffe in your pet shop? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, we have. Well, send it right over. I'm in the mood for a long neck. <laughs> That's it, Abbott. I'm going home. What are you going home for? 
to get a laugh. I haven't had one in two lines. <laughs> two pages. Will you stop this, Costello, and wait on that man that just came in? Yes, sir. Okay. How do you do? What can I do for you? Say, buddy, I'll, I'd like to buy a canary. A canary. A canary. A canary? No, a parrot. <laughs> You know, I think you're giving me the bird. Hey, look, I, I want to buy a parrot that talks and talks and talks for 24 hours a day. And when he gets tired of talking, I want him to scream at the top of his voice and call me all the names you can think of. What do you want to, with a parrot like that? Well, my wife's gone away and I'm lonesome. <laughs> well, we'll deliver the parrot in the morning. Now, can we call you a taxi? Oh, no thanks, buddy. I'll ride my pink elephant home. <laughs> now, I'll run and jump on his back. Here I go. <laughs> Miss him every time. <laughs> oh, forget him. Get busy, Costello. Costello, do you hear me? Mm-hmm. What are you standing there looking in that cage for? Gee, this is cute, Abbott. What do you mean? Four little skunks are playing bridge. Four little skunks are playing bridge? Yeah, they're playing for a tenth of a cent. Uh... <laughs> hey, Costello, look who's coming in the door. Why, it's Bessie May Mucho. Hello, Bessie. Hello, boys. I came in to buy a young wire haired doogie. A young wire haired doogie? Ah, <laughs> oh, Abbott, you know what a doogie is. That's a young poopy. A puppy. Poopy. <laughs> I'd like to get a playmate for the little doogie. Um, would you suggest a Siamese court? No, doogies don't like courts. Why don't you get a guinea poog or some little white meese? <laughs> I'll send my bootler over for the doogie in a toxie cob. Don't bother, Miss Mucho. I'll bring it over myself on the soon set booze. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much. And a Buenos Noches to you. And a pair of old snowshoes to you, too. <laughs> oh, oh, I... Sorry I ran into you, sir. Oh, that's all right, Lossie. The pleasure was all mine. Goodbye. Goodbye. Get out of here. Go on, get up, get up. <laughs> well, if it isn't... This is our friend, Scotty Brown. What can we do for you, Scotty? <laughs> Did you come in to buy a dog? <laughs> I used to have a dog, but dogs are such a sneaky lot. What do you mean, dogs are sneaky? Well, my neighbor used to throw meat over the fence to the dog, and that darn dog would beat me to it every time. <laughs> well, I got to be getting home to my wife. I got a box here for a nice box of fresh marshmallows. Scotty, I can't imagine you buying marshmallows for your wife. Oh, it's the thriftiest candy I can buy. Before my wife eats the marshmallows, she powders her nose with them first. Oh, good day, <laughs> Oh, Costello, catch that cat and put him in a cage. What is he doing running all over the store to the other cats? Nothing, Abbott. I just sold him. He's going around breaking his engagements. Uh, <laughs> hurry up. <laughs> Costello, here, com- here comes Mrs. Niles. Oh, hello, Mrs. Hello, Niles. Hello, Mr. Abbott. Ma, you have such a lovely pet shop here, but I just can't help laughing at the stuffed baboon in the front window. <laughs> oh, pardon me, that's Costello. <laughs> uh, hello, Mrs. Niles. I see you have company with you. Who are those two people looking over your shoulder? <laughs> pardon me, that's your ears. <laughs> Quiet, quiet, Costello. What can we do for you, Mrs. Niles? Well, I'm going away for the weekend, and I want to leave my little dog to board with you while I'm away. Come here, Tallulah, and say hello to the boys. <laughs> what kind of a dog is that, Mrs. Niles? She's a Doberman Pinscher. A Doberman what? Uh, pincher, Pinscher. Oh! <laughs> what are you doing? You call me the Pinscher. Will you behave yourself? Mrs. Niles, uh, this dog doesn't look uh, like a full-blooded Doberman. Well, I paid a thousand dollars for the dog. She's part Doberman and part bull. What part is bull? The part about the, th- the thousand. Wow! <laughs> That's a good joke if it comes out. Wait a minute. Go back and do it over. I think what part is bull? The part about the thousand dollars. Continue. <laughs> Quiet, Costello. Miss Rabbit, I'm leaving this dog with you, and I'm going to hold you personally responsible for her. If anything happens to Tallulah, I'll come back here with the police and close up this place. 
This dog is just like my own little baby. Aren't you, darling? <laughs> yes, Mother. <laughs> From time to time on this program, salutes have been offered to the great men of medicine, the doctors who have done so much in the service of mankind. Tonight is not a man of medicine we salute, but a woman, the first woman in America to receive the proud degree M.D. Her name, Dr. Elizabeth Blackwell, who bravely battled the prejudices and rock-bound tradition against women as doctors in the 19th century. So to Dr. Blackwell... And to the women doctors who followed her, including the 7,250 practicing in the United States today, this respectful salute. The makers of camels take an understandable pride in the standing of this cigarette in the medical profession. When the query, what cigarette do you smoke, doctor, was extended to 113,000 doctors, both men and women, by three leading independent research organizations, the brand most named was Camel. According to a recent nationwide survey... More doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Tonight, Camel's lovely Amy Arnell brings you the popular favorite... You won't be satisfied until you break my heart. You're never satisfied until the teardrop starts. I tried to shower you with love and kisses. But all I ever get from you is nagging and bragging. My poor heart is sagging the way you toss my heart around. A crying shame. I'll bet you wouldn't like it if I did the same. You're only happy tearing all my dreams apart. You won't be satisfied until you break my heart. I tried to shower you with love and kisses, but all I ever get from you is nagging and bragging. My poor heart is sagging the way you toss my heart around a crying shame. I'll bet you wouldn't like it if I did the same. You're only happy tearing all my dreams apart. You won't be satisfied. Your love won't be denied. You won't be satisfied until you break my heart. Chickory chick, chickory chick, chala chala, chickory. Costello, Costello, what are you doing? I'm trying to sing Mrs. Niles' dog to sleep. Now go to sleep, Tallulah. Chickory chick, chala chala. <laughs> Where did he bite you? Between a chicory chick and a chala-chala. Costello, you don't know how to handle dogs. You have to teach the dog by imitation. What do you mean, imitation? Well, if you want the dog to sit up, you sit up first and show him how it's done. Oh, I did that. I showed the dog how to sit up. And what happened? The dog patted me on the head and stuck a dog biscuit in my mouth. Put that dog out in the kennel in the backyard. No, Abbott, no. She nearly froze out there last night. Now, don't be silly. It wasn't cold last night. Oh, no? Well, at midnight, she came in and put on a suit of my long underwear. You idiot. How could a dog wear a suit of your long underwear? She found out how to work those hinges. <laughs> hey, hey, look, Costello. It's Mrs. Niles, French maid, Fifi LeBlanc. Oh, hello, Monsieur Abbott, and you cute little man, Monsieur Costello. Fifi, oh. come here and kiss your poor old father. <laughs> Ah, uh, why do you always pretend you love me, Monsieur Costello? You never give me anything. Gee, I wouldn't know what to give you. You have so much of everything. <laughs> and besides, I didn't I take you to Ciro's last night? Yes, but why didn't you take me inside? No, now look. Listen, you two, we have work to do around here. Is there anything we can do for you, Fifi? Oh, oh, yes. I have a message for Mrs. Niles. She forgot to get a license for her dog, Tallulah. Well, we'll take care of it right away. Costello, take Mrs. Niles' dog down to the city hall and get a license. Fifi, will you drive me down to the city hall? But Costello, you have your own car. Why do you want to ride with Fifi? Don't mind him, folks. He still believes in the Easter Bunny. <laughs> Costello, get out of here and get that dog license. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Mary's License Bureau. 
Oh, hello, Mother. Yes, I'll be home for dinner early tonight. No, there aren't many people coming in for the marriage licenses today. I guess all the girls are waiting to become June brides. Oh, I have to hang up, Mother. A young man just came in the door. Goodbye. Good afternoon. Is this the place where you get a license? Yes, it is. Where is the lucky little girl? Oh, she's out in the hall. She's sniffing around. (laughs) Well, a lot of them don't like the smell of the place. It's a pretty old building. Now, uh, what are your names? My name is Lou Costello, and her name is Tallulah. I'll bet she's happy that you're getting the license. Uh Uh-huh. She licked my hand. (laughs) Licked your hand? Yeah, then she leaned down and drooled on my shoe. (laughs) She certainly must love you. Uh, What does she look like? She's a sort of chocolate brown. (laughs) Chocolate brown? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I suppose she spends a lot of time in the sun. Uh, Tell me more about her. Is uh, she the dainty type? Not exactly. Her ears are too long. (laughs) They hang down in her food when she's eating. (laughs) You're kidding now. Oh, no. We have to pin her ears on top of her head with a clothespin. (laughs) Well, as long as you love her, Mm -hmm. I do hope there'll be some little ones. Yeah, and if there is, I'm going to keep all the males. What? I'm going to keep all the males. What about the females? I'll give them to the neighbors. <laughs> well, I suppose it's people's own business what they do. Now, uh, for the final question, how old are you? I'm 28. How old is Tallulah? I think she's about six or seven. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Costello, are you a hillbilly? I'm sorry, she's much too young. Now, you'll have to bring her father and mother in. I can't do that. Her mother ran away with a boxer. And the last we heard of her father, he was hanging around the back door of the backstage bar, eating out of the garbage cans. <laughs> Doesn't she have any other relatives in town? Yeah, she had nine pups last month. Oh! Oh! What was wrong with her? <laughs> Costello, I'm glad you're back. Mrs. Niles is here and wants her dog. Yes, Costello, where is Tallulah? A terrible thing happened. I left the dog outside the license bureau, and when I come out, she was gone. Gone? Yes. Yeah. Why, you little idiot. I'll sue you for this. I'll... Just a minute, just a minute, Mrs. Niles. I'll get you another dog. I'll get you a bird dog. Oh, what do I want with a bird dog? I have no bird. Well, then I'll get you a sled dog. I have no sled. I'll get you a bloodhound. Try and get out of that one. <laughs> Listen to me, Costello. If you don't find my dog by midnight tonight, I'll have you sent to Alcatraz. Remember? Have my dog Tallulah back at my house tonight, or else. (laughs) Gee, Abbott, I can't walk any further. We've searched every street in this town. Here we are now, way out in the country. We'll never find that dog in the dark. Yes, we will. Just stick close to me. Costello, that sounded like a wolf. It can't be a wolf. We're too far from Hollywood and Vine. (laughs) Hey, look, Costello. Here are dog tracks. They lead down this path to the old deserted house in the trees. I'm not going to that house, Abbott. Everybody says that house is haunted. Now, don't start that stuff, Costello. I told you before that a ghost is nothing but a myth. A myth? Yes, you know what a myth is, don't you? Yeah, a myth is uh, an unmarried girl. Oh, (laughs) would you talk sense? Knock on the door. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's a sign on the door. What does it say? It says, Dear Milkman, leave two quarts of blood. Uh, Abbott, let's get out of this place. Here, I'll open the door. Come on, let's go in. Gee, it's dark in here. What's that noise, Abbott? Oh, it's nothing but an old clock ticking. Uh, Sure, that's all it is. Just an old clock. (coughs) What was that? 11.30. Oh. Oh, that was just a street owl someplace. Call the dog, Costello. Call the dog. Oh, Tallulah! Oh, Tallulah! Abbott, somebody just called back to me. Well, that was your record, you dummy. Try it again. You'll see. Oh, Tallulah! Oh, Tallulah! See, Costello, try it again. Come here, doggy. Come here, doggy. This is your friend, Louie. Very glad to know you. I want to know, Abbott. I'll see you later. <laughs> Come back. Come back here, Costello. That was Tallulah barking. The, uh, the barking came from that closet. I open the door and you catch the dog when she comes out. Go ahead. <laughs> Watch what you're grabbing. Please. <laughs> Ten Niles. What are you doing in this deserted house? <laughs> yes, wait a minute. And you've got your wife's dog with you. 
Uh, what's behind all of this, Ken? Speak up. What are you up to? Oh, all right. All right. I'll tell the truth. Now. Come on, tell the truth. I got to tell somebody. Come on, tell us. You see, my wife is a vegetarian. Every day in our house is a meatless day. She never gives me anything but spinach, broccoli, cauliflower, string beans, and parsley. Oh, this guy's a regular victory garden with suspenders. <laughs> and finally, I couldn't stand it any longer. The vegetables were driving me crazy. At last, my mind snapped. <laughs> oh, come on, come on, get to the point. <laughs> get to the point, Niles. Why did you bring the dog to this deserted house? I, I didn't bring her here. She, she followed me. That's silly, Niles. Why should the dog follow you? I stole her bone. <laughs> We'll be back to Camel Cigarettes in just a moment. And now, tonight's salute to the men in the armed forces who won through to victory. Tonight, we hail the men of the 89th Middle West Division, heroes of Bingen, Eisenbach, and Central Germany, who overran scores of Nazi cities and captured more than 20,000 prisoners. Since the beginning of the war, the makers of camels have sent more than 150 million free camels to our fighting men overseas. But now, with demobilization in progress... Free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. This week, the camels go to U.S. Army AAF Regional and Convalescent Hospital, Fort George Wright, Spokane, U.S. Naval Hospital, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, U.S. Marine Hospital, Galveston, Texas, Veterans Hospital, St. Cloud, Minnesota, and Veterans Hospital, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, in your honor, men of the Middle West Division. <laughs> Broadcasts go out to the United States twice a week. Our rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are stationed and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now here are Bud and Lou with the final word. Well, Costello, you finally solved the case of the missing dog. Ah, but that was nothing. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, if you will wait until after the program, I'll tell you about how I helped J. Edgar Hoover capture a ring of spies. No, no, not that! Anything but that! Oh, he's the biggest liar in the world! Let me out of here! Hey, wait a minute. Hey, look, Lou. Costella, it's your old friend Mullenhead sitting in the audience. How do you like that? I thought the moon was coming up. <laughs> you're going to be smart. Costello, why do you insist upon trying to make people think, give them the impression that you're smart and intelligent? You couldn't even give me the answer to the most elementary riddle. I'll try you. What's the difference between a girl, a soldier, and a water pistol? I don't know. You don't know. All right. A soldier faces a powder, and a girl powders her face. What's the water pistol for? That's for a little squirt like you. <laughs> Good night, folks. Good night. Good night, Debbie. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, try camels in your tea zone. See if they don't suit your taste, your throat, to a tea. C-A-M-E-L-S. Year after year, of all pipe tobaccos in the world, more pipes smoke Prince Albert than any other. For Prince Albert is choice tobacco, crimp cut and especially treated for the removal of tongue bite. Try Prince Albert, the national joy smoke in your pipe. Saturday night, be sure to listen to Prince Albert's Grand Ole Opry. You'll hear Red Foley, Grand Ole Opry's sensational new singer. He's got a voice that's romantic as moonlight on the mountains, warm as southern hospitality. And the way Red Foley sings our great American folk songs makes mighty fine listening. Remember Grand Ole Opry Saturday night on NBC with the Duke of Paducah, Minnie Pearl, and Red Foley. Millions of men, women, and children in Europe and Asia today face starvation. You can help by eliminating all waste of foods in your home, by turning in all of your used facts, and by producing and preserving all food possible through home gardening and canning. Share a meal, save a life. Be sure to listen at this very same time next week for another Abbott and Costello show for Camel Cigarettes. Thursday night is All-Star Night on NBC. Stay around now for Rudy Valley over most of these stations. This is Ken Niles in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night for Camel. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>